Hello everybody, Kirk Nelson here. Welcome to creating brushes from these smoke photos that we generated last lesson. Let's start out here in Bridge, looking at the various smoke images that I captured from our last lesson. Now you may notice that there are a lot of these. I took maybe 200 photos or so of different columns of smoke and just kept repeating that process of lighting up that Q-tip, blowing it out, and trying to capture the smoke as it wafted up into the air. And of these 200 or so, I expect I'll probably get only about six or seven of them that's actually going to be useful. And Bridge is really good for being able to closely look at these photos as you sort through them and find ones that you like. I'm gonna start with this one, number 1181. Right click and say, open with Photoshop. To begin with, we need to eliminate the color information because creating brushes in Photoshop Photoshop only looks at the black and white levels of the pixels, which is known as the luminosity levels. So any color information is going to be completely discarded. And if we continue looking at it with its color information there, it can be misleading sometimes as to what pixels appear bright and which pixels appear dark. So to adjust that, let's add a black and white adjustment layer. Just using the preset values can work out pretty good for us to begin with. And then let's add a curves adjustment and just start working with some of this contrast. Now what you do with this curve depends entirely on what type of smoke column you're trying to create for your brush. If you want to add a lot of contrast to it, you get just a little bit of very bright smoke clouds in there, but you can brighten it up to capture a lot of very faint smoke, or you can pull it down under for a high contrast with a very little smoke. I'm going to go somewhere with this S-curve, very faint S-curve in here. And while creating brushes in Photoshop, you want to be very careful about edges. Because if there's a flat edge, or if our white pixels, in this case, go completely to the edge of the canvas, it's going to create a hard line whenever we use the brush. And that's not exactly the most desirable result. So let's add a new layer. Grab our brush tool and just switch to a very soft brush loaded with black paint and go along and eliminate any of those potential hard lines. This just makes sure that there's no extraneous pixels being captured in the brush. When Photoshop defines brushes, it looks actually at the black pixels and not the white. So we need to invert this photo. There's actually an adjustment layer that does that. It's this invert adjustment layer, which changes this from white smoke on a black background to black smoke on a white background. This also may help reveal areas that need additional touch-ups with the brush. I think this little spot here can become distracting, especially if we end up using the brush routinely. It can be a very noticeable repetitive element. So you wanna watch out for any of those type of things and make sure they're eliminated. Another swipe of the black brush just to ensure that there's no areas that's going to accidentally be defined as part of the brush. And then we are ready to define our brush. To do this, you first need to make sure that your focus is not on any of the masks that are associated with the different adjustment layers. If it's an adjustment layer that's active, make sure it's on the properties element of that adjustment layer and not the mask. Well, what's really a good routine to get into is even just clicking back on the background because that'll solve any of the confusion that might come from that. So from here, we go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. Let's call this Smoke Brush 01. And then to test it out, let's create a new document, fill it with white, and reduce our brush size. You'll notice that Photoshop automatically changed the current brush preset to the one we just captured. It did that because I had the brush tool active when I defined the preset. Let's test this using a blue color. That looks pretty good. That's a really nice column of blue smoke there. And that's the basics for creating these smoke brushes in Photoshop. There's a couple special cases I want to draw your attention to before we close this out though. The first being, what if you're working with a photo that really has a lot of extra elements in there? How do you work with that? That's really not that difficult to deal with. You just have to be careful with your masking and your black paint out layer. This photo is gorgeous, 
in that it's got these beautiful little swirls of smoke coming up, but there's also a lot of background smoke in there that I don't want to capture as part of the brush. In fact, even this part up here, I only want limited areas of it. Certainly don't want any of the hard edges to be available in the brush. And I'm also capturing the wick here a little bit, and there's that edge of the light, and I don't want any of that in there. So I've got my standard adjustment layers already over here, the black and white, the curves, and the invert. The curves, I created just a very slight slope, which is maximizing some of those shapes. But then the main work just comes from that painted black layer. And you can see what I did with that one. Just to make it a little more obvious, let me add a white layer in between here. So now it's clear where all I painted with the black brush to paint out those smoke elements to help isolate the smoke shapes that I want to create within my brush. And this is purely based on taste. Maybe you want to paint out this whole upper section and you just want this main column of smoke. Maybe you want to make a brush that has both of them in it. It's completely your call in creating your own library of brushes as to which forms you think are gonna be the most useful in your work. Many times when developing a library of specialized custom brushes like this, you'll encounter the question of, is it more useful to turn this into a brush or just have it as a stock resource? And the honest answer to that is both of them have their place. Both of them have their own sets of benefits and detriments. For example, a brush is very easy, it's very convenient, it's right there. As we saw here, it's very quick to add this effect in here. Another great thing about it, if you create it on its own layer, you don't have to mask anything out. So this brush essentially can easily be selected and you don't have to worry about trying to mask it. The pixels on that layer are only ones created by the brush, which is a pretty handy type of advantage because masking out the smoke from here is not exactly that straightforward. But that's exactly what you would have to do if you wanna use it as a regular stock. And I'm gonna show you how that would even work. Let's go back to our first background layer without adding any of these other elements in here. Now I'm gonna create a copy of the background because this is just going to be our smoke stock layer. And then I'm going to hide the invert layer. So I'm back to having the white pixels on the black, because that's how a layer mask is defined in Photoshop. The white areas are the visible areas. The black areas are the invisible or masked out areas. Then I want to create a merged layer of this entire set. So I'm holding down the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac and going to Layer, Merge Visible. Now here's where it gets a little bit different from other processes you've seen before. I'm going to copy this entire layer. So hold down the Control or the Command key while clicking on that thumbnail, or you could hit Control or Command A for Select All. And I'm going to copy that. Edit, Copy. Then I'm gonna hide all of these layers except for that smoke stack. Cancel the selection with Select, Deselect, and add a layer mask. And then I'm going to use those copied pixels as the mask for this layer. And to do that, I need to change my view to this actual layer mask. And do that by holding down the Alt or the Option key, while clicking on the mask thumbnail. So now I'm viewing the mask. And we go to edit, paste. And it pastes it right in there exactly where it was. Cancel that selection and go back to our regular layer. Now it doesn't look very different, but once we start to move it around, you can see it's been masked out. So we're seeing only those smoke pixels. In fact, let's bring this over and drop it in next to our brush pixels. It comes in really large, so let's scale that down to be approximately the same size. And in this case, the smoke we captured was a light gray, and you can see that as we position it over those other smoke elements, that it's still retaining that light gray color. One of the advantages of the brush is that you can easily paint it with any color that you want. To change the color of this, you have to use a couple of different tricks depending on how you wanna do it. One of the ways that I really like to do it is to add a layer style, and I'm going to add a color overlay and change it to a dark blue, similar to what we were using before. I'm trying to get it so I can actually see that. And let's change the blend mode to multiply. Look at the difference in the color hues we see here, or really it's the depth of colors. When you use a brush, just a standard brush, 
you don't get much of a variation of color tone because it's all using one paint color. When using the stock, you can get some great variations in there. You can see the richness and the saturation varies greatly according to the areas that have a very deep color value to the areas that are very faint. Now this may not be nearly as convenient as using the brush, but it does have certain elements like that that can make it more attractive depending on what use you want to use it for.